and and I better turn down my my cell phone here. I'm just I'm being careful because I happen to be sitting in a church service yesterday, and I always like to try and leave my telephone either off while I'm there, or sometimes leave it in the uh, in the car. Which of course it means it could get stolen, I suppose. But you know, you you take it that when you're parked outside a church, people are going to be in their better nature, and you won't have to deal with that sort of thing. A guy next to me who parked next to me yesterday left a golden retriever in the box of his pickup truck. And and the dog, you want to talk about well-behaved. I came out after the service, and there was a guy across the street playing with another dog in the park. And the golden retriever showed no interest in jumping out, racing across the grass, and joining in with all of that. In fact, when I came out, the golden retriever had his head down, sadly, along the edge of the box, waiting for his owner. But his owner wasn't far behind me, and all of a sudden that dog just, boom, stood up, tail going, all ready to go. So some people out there have done marvelous work with that. But I was sitting in church yesterday and somebody's cell phone went off. That's an embarrassing thing that happens. Long, long ago when cell phone technology was still rather young, this was before the the iPhone technology and all of the smartphones came along. And I had one of those old flip phones and I happened to realize I had it with me in church. And so I took it and I, I literally put it under my right thigh and then put my thigh down over it while I was sitting in the pew. And sure enough, someone tried to call me, but it blotted out. You could not even hear the ringing uh, when you've got really, you know, um, Robert Newhouse style thighs. You can do that and, and no one will actually catch on that anything's going on. Uh, but I managed to get away with it that day. And now I try my best. Uh, some, of the, some of the churches in the area will actually announce, turn off your cell phones before the service, just to remind people of that. Because yesterday it happened right in the middle of a homily. So here's a guy who's trying to give you the message. <laughs> And all of a sudden, hello, God calling here. You can tell him he's doing fine. Eight minutes after eight o'clock, Bill Colley with you on this Monday morning. Hey, how are all of you? I'm fine too. 51 at our studio. Some of the things we have coming up, Randy Staples from Idaho Weekly Briefing will join us for about 15 minutes at the, uh, the 840 break, just after the 840 break. And then I believe Chris Anderson from the Herod Center is coming by a little later this morning. I looked out the window this morning while I was getting ready for work. I don't know that it's quite a full moon yet, but it looks like we're close. I, I notice these things once in a while because I'm getting ready before sunrise. And other than the fellow who called my house at 1.30 on Sunday morning, oh. You know, when somebody gets a wrong number, sometimes they get it horribly wrong. The call, I, I did a reverse lookup. The call was from Brooklyn, New York. Now, at 1.30 hour time, it's 3.30 in Brooklyn, New York. I do know this, though, because I visited New York City when I was a graduate student, way back in the middle 1980s, and there was a, a restaurant, okay, it might have been more than a restaurant, across from our hotel, it was called the Blarney Stone. And I, I know from talking to people in the neighborhood that these places in New York don't have a last call until 4 o'clock in the morning. So my gut feeling is, some ham-handed drunk was sitting in a, in a gin joint, and it was 3.30 in the morning his time, and he was trying to make a phone call, and he hit some wrong numbers, and he got mine. I didn't bother to call back. I, I, I didn't get to the phone in time. He didn't leave a message, or her. I didn't get to, get an opportunity to give a call back, and I figured, you know what? If it was some street corner drug dealer, I don't want to talk to them anyway. 8.11 now, Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. So we've got a lot coming up today, but I have a couple of things I've got to start with that I think are going to be related to our lives right here in Twin Falls, Idaho, but also related to a story that took place in Texas over the weekend. Just as I was getting ready for bed last night, I checked uh, checked my computer and there was a bulletin from the Washington Times about a shooting in Texas. Now, Valerie Geller, she is the woman who puts up the, speaking of New York City, she puts up the billboards in the subway and on buses. And, and she's been able, she, originally the city was going to ban her from doing this. She went to court and, and she won the right to do this. But she puts up billboards on, the, on buses as well as in the subways that warn people about the dangers of Islam. Now, a couple of months ago, a fellow that I used to work with at a radio station in fact, I hired him because he was one of those people I thought who spoke his mind. He was fired because he said on air that he thought all Muslims in the United States were suspect, that should be under suspicion, because he, he doesn't feel that we can, we can trust them and that they haven't done enough to ensure, ensure that trust. He got canned for saying that. She immediately went to his defense, so he got a nationwide defense 
from Valerie Geller. She formerly worked for the New York Post as an editor. She's quite well known in the media world. She was sponsoring a contest in Texas where people could draw cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. I believe there was a $10,000 prize awarded for the winning entry. Now, this apparently inflamed some of the local Muslims. First of all, in the course of my lifetime, you have uh, had artists who've actually decided that they would take portraits of the, uh, the Blessed Mother and throw dung on them. I don't go shoot up the, uh, the museum because that happens. You had another artist who took a glass of urine and stuck a crucifix in it, and he called it Piss Christ. Once again, I didn't go shoot him up, and I didn't go shoot up the museum. Most of us are reasonable people. We don't do those things. But there was an attack on this contest in Texas, if you didn't already know it. A security guard was hit. Unfortunately, he did have to go to the hospital, but he is going to survive. And then police opened fire, and they killed the two Islamic radicals. Cleared all of that up. And that's sometimes, you know, you want to talk about quick reaction. Maybe we need more of that. Uh, the, the politically correct will say, you shouldn't go around provoking Muslims. Let me just tell you something. Over the weekend in Baltimore, Maryland, there was a guy, he was out after the curfew. The police approached him, and he had a T-shirt that read, Blank the Police. So they pepper sprayed him. And then as he was writhing on the ground, you know, holding his face, they poured a bucket of water on him to clean it up. And they arrested him and they dragged him away. Now, liberals say that's an appropriate provocation because you're doing it against the police. But if you're doing a provocation such as a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad, that's a bad provocation. You understand? That's part of the liberal double standard. So as I was sorting through all of this, I also saw a message, an email message from one of our, uh, well, one of the members of our audience, and, and I'm proud to say one of the more intelligent members of our audience, and it came from a website, and the title is Creeping Sharia. And this is actually from creepingsharia.wordpress.com. And this is a follow-up to something we were talking about late last week. Twin falls to get influx of Syrian Muslim refugees. Now, see, as of last week, we didn't know if they were uh, Muslim, if they were Jewish, if they were Christian, or if they were Syrian atheists. But apparently this is clarifying it. And the writer says, projections show the center will likely, and that's the, by the way, this is that, that they run this at the College of Southern Idaho. The center will receive likely 300 refugees from around the world during the upcoming federal fiscal year. That's the same number as this year. And, uh, and of course, the, the, the fellow who runs this refugee center says, quote, we're not accepting any challenges, unquote. Well, what does that mean? Uh, it's, is this like saying, you know what, if I give you $500 uh, for my favorite charity, and if you match it, I'll throw in another 500 So if we're saying if they give us 300 we're not looking to any challenges to bring another 3000 or so. Is that it? At least not right away. To date, the U.S. has resettled just 648 Syrians. So Twin Falls, Idaho, the Magic Valley, is going to resettle 50% of those who've already been resettled in this country. What for? That's my question. And the writer says, if, as if it's our responsibility to take in those who hate us and won't take jobs from Americans, but will live off taxpayer money for decades. Children will enroll in the Twin Falls School District's Newcomer Center with locations at Lincoln Elementary School, Robert Stu Stewart Middle School, and Canyon Ridge High School. And there's more to this. I mean, I, I was able to post this. If you go to Facebook and you pull up our KLIX Facebook page, I have posted a link, and you will be able to read all of this on your own. The Refugee Center has helped 162 newcomers settle in Twin Falls by the end of March. February was a busy month with 45 incoming refugees. That's the last month that we currently have a number for, apparently, uh, 45 newcomers, newbies, in the Twin Falls area. So I have sent some questions, and I have, a, I have not had a chance to see it because I just got a response from some public relations folks at the College of Southern Idaho. But there are some simple questions I think that we would all like answered. Number one, do you have local elected officials signing off on these projects? Or is it just the elitists at the College of Southern Idaho? These are important questions. Does the Twin Falls City Council have a say? Do some of the local county, uh, county governments have a say in all of this? Does your state government have a say in any of this? Because we vote for those people. And they're responsible. They, 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 but here's the thing. If they have no say in all of this, how come there's no public hearing on this? Well, because why would they have a public hearing? You know the college 
understands completely this is a foregone conclusion. The majority of people in the Magic Valley do not want this taking place. Therefore, it is done by fiat, that is, by divine right. They come in and they say, we are resettling these people here. These are questions I think we need to be, we need to be asking, and we need someone from the college to come in here and sit down with us, or at least on the telephone, and take some of your, your questions as well. These are important issues that need to be addressed because can we continue to handle this? And after what you saw happen in Texas over the weekend, shouldn't we be a little more careful when we make these decisions about who is actually coming into this country? Hello? Does anybody out there have any security concerns? The other part of this is, if my tax dollars are going to pay for the housing and the groceries of these people and perhaps their education as well at the college, and I, I'm also a believer that the college is going to be making some money from this as well, because if the students are going to be going to classes at CSI, and some of these people will be in retraining programs, the adults, then somebody is going to have to come up with tuition. And these students aren't going to have it coming from war-torn Syria. And that means, again, not only are you paying for the housing and the meals, you will be paying for their tuition as well. So this is taxation without representation. I think that's the only way we can describe that. 818, Bill Colley with you this morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. And you're on the air. Good Monday morning to you, Bill. Thank you. You know, I just, it, it irks me to no end. And I think the biggest problem is going to be is that the liberals or the uh, progressives' decisions on a lot of this stuff is going to come down to the conservatives backing up the military and fighting our way out of this. And that's, it's sad. It, it's, just, it's just sad that it, we've become so divided on, under a president that promised to bring everybody together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, look, it's it's intentionally being done. I have no doubts about that. That there is an effort. This is all. This comes from Cloward and Piven and uh, Elinsky. The whole idea is to drive this system down, break it all apart, and then they feel they can build up. What do you call it? The uh, the United States of Campuchia or something, and start all over from year one. Yeah. I'll keep practicing my thousand-yard shots, and we'll keep going from there. <laughs> Thank you much for the call, sir. That's where you need a good 30-odd six. Yeah, we had a neighbor. He could just, from about 1,400 yards, he could just hit about anything, even a chipmunk. Of course, you didn't want to be the chipmunk on the other end. That's that's true. And I know right, right now all of the animal cruelty and uh, and leftist animal rights people out there are saying, but that poor chipmunk. Look, the chipmunk never knew what hit it. 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley with you. 53 at our studios. Randy Staples will join us in about 20 minutes because, as you know, there is a special session of the Idaho State Legislature on the way. Oh, that has really angered uh, the, the leftists, the Marxists, Leninists over at the, uh, the Times News. We'll have details on that, too, coming up on Top Story. Ooh, 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 ooh. You may have a chance to win some money. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, it's called pay your bills. Actually, if you win the money, bill may not get paid. But still, uh, we, we want to men make a mention of this. This is going to be something that you may want to be tuned into KLX for during the month of May. You could end up winning a thousand dollars. Well, one of my old editors said, "Never say a thousand. Say one thousand. So people, I'm gonna, there we go. Move my microphone. Uh, that sound of my bent knees. We're going to move the microphone so I can better actually tell you about this because my bifocal is looking at the screen right now." One, make sure that we get all the details spot on right. So you have two chances every weekday in May to win $1,000. Listen weekdays for the cue to call. And when you hear it, now that may be coming up sometime mm, early this morning. When that happens, you have to be caller 25. And let me give you a telephone number. I know that the uh, the, the prize folks out there, they're all, uh, they're all uh, very... Uh, very much the poor sign. Well, never mind. <laughs> That's an old radio term. One eight seven seven. So when you actually hear that cue come up, you know, you can give us a call at one eight seven seven. Now this would be toll free. Eight five four W I N S. That would be nine four six seven. If you're looking at the numbers, but again, that would be one eight seven seven eight five four 
9467, which stands for WINS. And, and by the way, you know, if you're listening and you do this eventually, eventually, it's like I say, a chance to win $1,000, but also there may be an opportunity at some point for someone to win considerably more than that. So I thank you very much. Uh, keep your ears open this morning, if nothing else. I have a couple of other messages, too. Our good friends at Western States Bus Services, who very much help make this program possible Monday through Friday, are hiring part-time bus drivers right now, split shifts five days per week, summers off, and scheduled no school days. The pay is $10.75 per hour. You know, I, I could probably do that. Maybe they could just put like a headset on me and a microphone, you know, curling around from the headset. And I could do the show while driving the school bus. Hey, pipe down back there. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Next caller. Apply today by contacting 733-8003. Western States Bus Services is an equal opportunity employer. Also, coming up this Wednesday... Uh, Dr. Tripp or one of his associates from Tripp Family Medicine will be in studio with us between 8.30 and 9 o'clock in the morning. We call it Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine, which is located right here in Twin Falls on Fillmore Street, directly across from the main post office. We are going to be talking about something called silent killers. You know, you may look great when you look in the mirror, uh, but that doesn't say anything about your cholesterol levels or how much plaque may be building up in your arteries. So we have a number of things like that. Hypertension, another good one, we should point out. You've got a number of things like that you've got to be concerned about, especially those of us who have now reached that half-century mark, uh, give or take a few more years. So those things coming up. That's uh, Wednesday morning between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, right here on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. This is Top Story with Bill Colley. And coming up now, 8.27, we'll call it 53 at our studios. Uh, I have a I have a clipping here from uh, yesterday's Times News. The, first of all, the front page is all a bunch of pictures of the canyon. Everybody's already seen that. It hasn't moved much over the last several thousand years. That's the local news. Hey, check out some canyon uh, hotspots here. Yeah, yeah. So you have to go to the op-ed pages to actually see anything worthwhile. Legislature got us into this mess. The writer is uh, is venting because some Idaho state legislators actually still believe that the state should have some sovereignty and shouldn't always be tethered by an umbilical cord to the federal government. And the writer says, single day of the legislature cost taxpayers about $36,000. Of course, all of the restaurant uh, owners in the area immediately around uh, the Capitol building are going to do very well. We should point that out. And the writer goes on to say, the sad truth, of course, is that all of this could have been avoided and a lot of money saved had these same lawmakers done the right thing. Who, by the way, has given a newspaper editor the power to understand what is right and wrong in this country? Have they been ordained in some sort of church? No. Okay. So when they always say it's the right thing, that's a very subjective judgment. They're talking about the fact that a legislative committee of just 17 people rejected by just one vote, moving a bill along to the entire floor, And this bill calls for allowing Idaho to participate in a federal program to collect child support from folks who may have skipped overseas. One vote, that's all. We're not talking about anything extreme or ridiculous here. Now, $43 million, we are told, is at stake if the state does not go along with this, that the carrot and stick from the federal government will not be given to us. Well, wait a minute. I'm I'm looking at some of the numbers here. First of all, they say, the writer says about 16,000 families in the Magic Valley would be hurt, 7,000 children just in Twin Falls County. He says about because they don't really know. Oh, you don't really know. So they're throwing all of these numbers at you, and you sit there and you scratch your head. Wouldn't $43 million in the first place if you could not collect from all of these scoff laws? Couldn't we just take the $43 million? I bet it would be even less to spread it around all of these families. Number two, whenever I see these numbers, you can, you throw any number out there you like. I was a good friend of Lee Transo, who, who worked for a couple of different presidential administrations, and his job, Dr. Transo's job, was to cut federal budgets, to get rid of waste. And he said, every time I would try to do this, somebody would say, oh, but a million children are going to starve. So he'd throw some figures at them to prove otherwise. And then they'd go to page, page two. Oh, but 100,000 children are going to starve. He'd throw some more details at them. Oh, well, page three, 10,000 children are going to starve. So once again, you have, but you know what? If you're a newspaper editor from, I don't know, Long Island, you probably know much more than anybody in Idaho. You know, your IQ is at least, what, 263. Randy Staple, in about 15 minutes. 
Oh, yeah. No, this makes me feel right at home. What a great way to start the week. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Did you know you can actually reach me by telephone? Well, in case you didn't, here's the number. 736-0300. That is 736-0300. I wonder if that kid in that public, um, uh, what do we call those, PSAs, if that kid ever learned how to dress himself. That'd be embarrassing otherwise. Of course, you know, with modern news media, what they do is a guy comes on the air whenever it's cold. You know, we get we get into the cold, wintry weather. Your local TV stations always have these stories about how to deal with winter. Because you wouldn't know. I mean, obviously, you're a dumb, dumb, dummy. And so in media, they come on the air and they say, remember, uh, drink plenty of fluids. Do they mean water? <laughs> you know, I don't get up at the house when I'm thirsty and say, gee, I really need a glass of fluid. Unless, of course, uh, I'm, I'm a Dodge or something like that. And then they'll say, and remember, it's cold outside. So when you leave the house, wear clothes. Because you wouldn't otherwise. See, so from day to day, you just forget to do that sort of stuff, right? 835, Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story. 54 at our studios. It'll warm up a lot today, but later in the week, we're looking at some rain. No one probably complaining in the agriculture end of things about that. Rain, perhaps late Wednesday, and then early morning showers on both Thursday and Friday. Won't be quite as warm as it has been the last few days as well. Uh, getting back to this editorial from the Times News. It says here, extreme paranoia about federal government overreach is putting our families in jeopardy. Here, our lawmakers believe crazy things. They read about Muslims on the internet more than their own lawyers and legal experts. Again. You had two guys pull up in front of a, an event, a contest, a cartoon contest yesterday in Texas, and they had planned to bomb the place before they were shot dead by police. You know, in some parts of the country, they're saying the police should just move out of the neighborhoods. I uh, think one American city back on the East Coast. There, there's, there are suggestions that they would be better off without police. That way they could, you know, deal crack and shoot all of their competitors with impunity. But in Texas, they're very happy that this, this uh, convention was not bombed by these Islamic terrorists. Why do we have so many Neville Chamberlains out there in government and in news media instructing us on how we should be living? But Muslim is my friend, is what this guy is trying to tell you. That's ultimately, because, you know, they'll just ensure when they take over that you have all the press rights you've always had. No, that won't happen now, will it? But every time I read one of these editorials from one of these guys at these newspapers, the smarminess, just the way it just, I mean, it's unreal. They think that they are somehow the smartest person who walks into any room. Then how, how did you get stuck working at the Times News? At a two-horse newspaper or one-horse newspaper, I guess you'd call it. How do, if you're the smartest dang guy in the newspaper industry, why aren't you working at the New York Times or the Washington Post? Or even at the Idaho Statesman? Yet they, 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 they just can't stop with a, with, a, with, a, with a nastiness about how they think everybody else in Idaho happens to be dumber than boxes of rocks. And, and then they wonder why they can't sell newspapers any longer. I heard this from somebody who's in the know in our sales department. Uh, that was telling me <laughs> that whenever they run coupons, the only people that show up at the businesses with the coupons are about 70 years old and up, which if that's your demographic, it's very, very difficult to continue your business. We have a caller with us. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story on KLIX. It's coming up on 838. Bill, you know, it amazes me that they can put down Christians, kill Christians, make fun of Jesus Christ, we just sit back and go, well, you're the ignorant one, and that's okay. But you make, a, you make fun of Muhammad, and they come and shoot you or bomb you, and you deserve it. Yeah, and uh, thank you for the call. I think what, what we're talking about is there's a lot of insecurity in that particular religious faith. And because, uh, and, and among these people, too, you know, they, they, they've been, I suppose... Uh, feel that over the over the course of centuries, because they have been colonized and they've been unable to win any serious wars, 
and uh, they've been unable to come up with any serious technology over the last 1,000 years. I suppose that there is what you might call an inferiority complex that is running through the Islamic world. And for that very reason, these people lash out in violent extremist ways and think somehow that they're doing God a favor and that God is applauding their efforts when if they would go look in the mirror and see what a sad sack they happen to be, or sad sacks, that we would probably have some recognition finally, or maybe not. But as we had a guest on the air with us, uh, she was here with us on Friday, if you missed it, uh, Brigitte Gabriel talking with us about this situation, and she came right out and said it on this show. Islam is not compatible with Western values. It never will be. Never, ever, ever. This notion that diversity makes us stronger, I always like the old Pat Buchanan line, show me the evidence. You have none, that's why. 20 minutes away from 10 o'clock. Randy Staples will join us in just a few minutes. From Idaho Weekly Briefing, right here on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. My name is Bill Colley, and God willing, I am here until 10 o'clock this morning. Well, you know, we could end up having one of those cardiac events the way things are going. I was mentioning just a few minutes ago that, of course, as usual at this time on Mondays, we are joined by Randy Staples from Idaho Weekly Briefing. And this week, the weekly briefing, let's just say, is everything you need to know about Idaho. In fact, Randy, we don't talk about this a lot, but first of all, welcome back. But number two, if people wanted to actually subscribe, how do they go about doing that? Well, good to talk again and uh, and how they would do that. Best way would be to go to www.ridenbaugh.com. That's R I D E N B A U G H. You have, uh, we're not going to get to all of this today, but <laughs> which is why I asked you to do that. So people, if they have an interest, they can go check out uh, all of this because if, if, again, if you, if you, if you really want to know what's going on in the state of Idaho, uh, I think you pretty well cover it. Uh, first of all, special session, May 18th, um, we had some speculation about that last week. We weren't sure it was going to happen. What I thought was interesting, what you were writing this week, is that, yes, it's going to happen, but we don't know that the governor is going to have the support. Well, it's, uh, it, it could be a fairly close thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very difficult thing to uh, on, on an issue that has some controversy attached to it to make sure that you have corralled all the votes and to keep them corralled. Uh, you may you may think that you have the uh, all the votes that you need on uh, on Monday, and then by the time you get to Thursday, it may be that one or two of them have uh, wandered off the reservation. And if the votes are close enough, it uh, it could be an iffy thing. That was uh, that was kind of the uh, the uh, concern that that former governor Rich, when he was uh, governor during his uh, seven month stretch. Uh, he must have had when he called a special session, and he counted the votes pretty carefully before he uh, before he did that. And he was he was a deeply experienced legislator and knew how to count votes, but it was still a very close thing. Uh, if the the legislature had not had the two thirds vote needed to pass the uh, the legislation quickly, it might have been that just enough votes might have wandered off. During the ensuing debate, to have uh, to have created some real issues, and that's part of what's uh, what's at issue this time too is that that when it gets to the floor, you need really not just a simple majority, but to make it move quickly, uh, you need a two-thirds vote because the normal process could involve a week or more to pass a, a bill through legislature just on a simple majority if that's all you have. And during that time, all kinds of mischief can happen. I, you know, despite all the criticism that's bouncing around the state about the need to do this, the the, the committee vote was exceptionally close. Uh, what nine to eight, I believe, was the uh, the final tally. It was by one vote. Yes, one vote. Now, the governor obviously has some allies in the legislature. Couldn't he have found someone who could have brought this uh, for a, someone to work this bill in committee a bit earlier than the final day of session because? Maybe they could have avoided all of this. 
Well, that's a good question. That uh, that in hindsight, at least, it uh, a lot of lot of problem, a lot of uh, a lot of heartburn probably could have been avoided had they done it a little bit earlier. Because as you know, as you're indicating, as I'm, as you know, it uh, that that famous vote in the committee occurred only a few hours before the legislature adjourned for the year. Uh, and as a result, there was not a lot of time to talk about or reconsider it. Once the train kind of gets headed toward adjournment, it's very difficult to slow it down enough for for even something like that. Uh, the the immediate thinking was that uh, that adjournment uh, is sort of uh, first and foremost in in legislators' minds, and and other subjects are uh, are far less behind. Maybe it shouldn't be that way, but but it often tends to be, and it probably would have helped a great deal had they. Uh, Allowed for a little more time, a little more discussion, and uh, and and had a little bit more opportunity to to get with people. Our guest is Randy Stapleus from Idaho Weekly Briefing. It's eight forty eight fifty six at our studios. This is Top Story on News Radio thirteen ten KLIX and News Radio thirteen ten dot com with Bill Colley. The governor, of course, is a lame duck, and I guess a lot of this is really going to reflect on. Uh, just how much uh, legislative juice he has left. If it doesn't happen, it, it's it's really. Uh, I, I guess is it, sort of a sad end to what might, has been a very, you know, a very very interesting political career. Well, it's uh, it's it's been a long political career. This is a guy who uh, has has been around the system long enough to uh, to know how it how it works. One of the things that he did uh, first off uh, on his uh, on in, on the day that he made the announcement of the special session was to make sure that the House Speaker. Scott Bedke was kind of publicly attached to it as well. He made a point of noting that he had been working closely with Bedke on this, and Bedke was uh, was brought up, was quoted on uh, on uh, the wisdom of doing this. Uh, he, I think, fairly wisely wanted to make sure that that not only he was was uh, uh, attached to this. But that legislative leaders were as well, so it wouldn't be we wouldn't have to be just a matter of of uh, him pursuing it, but others as well. And there are ways for uh, for a cooperative House Speaker, say, or a Senate Pro Tem. And I, so far as I, I've been able to gather, the Senate Pro Tem is is in favor of the passage of this as well. Uh, there, are, there are ways that they can that they can work. The committee vote, as as noted, was a, was a uh, a very close vote. There, there have been a few reports that none of those of those committee members have seemed to indicate that they that they're changing their minds that they might vote the other way around, but it wouldn't have to necessarily go that way. There is a committee in in the House called Ways and Means, and if Speaker Bedke so chose, he could uh, route this new piece of legislation because that's what it would have to be through the uh, through the House Ways and Means Committee. It it. It consists solely of members of of leadership, plus uh, an appointed chairman. And if a speaker wants to get uh, legislation that is approved by leadership through some through uh, a committee quickly, that would be a fast way to do it. And I wouldn't be too surprised if he, rather than send it through the same committee for a possible rerun of the of the earlier vote, if he just sent it through uh, ways and means instead. On another note, uh, you were writing uh, as well in the in the briefing about a water rights uh, a bill that U.S. Senator Mike Crapo has signed on board with. Uh, there is some concern that perhaps uh, the current effort by the federal government would uh, would be a little intrusive on people's property rights if they came and were actually regulating creek water that was running through a ranch or something like that. I I actually know a fellow when I was working on the eastern shore of the Chesapeake Bay, who actually got elected to the General Assembly in Delaware because he his campaign, uh, one of the highlights was he said that the government would be coming onto your property and inspecting water puddles. Um, this is a huge issue in a lot of places when it comes to water safety and the like. Uh, and, and, and Senator Crapo is essentially saying that states should have more of a say in this when it comes to uh, federal regulation. Well, and, and as I understand it, he's what he's... Uh... What he's suggesting here is not uh, really a major change in kind of the historical approach, but but more a uh, a concern that that the way that uh, 
some new environmental protection agency regulations are written might allow the agency to get into areas to get into uh, small water bodies you know maybe that just run through a single piece of property for example that uh, that they had not historically done and so I it's I think the idea is to uh, to kind of keep regulatory spread from uh, from happening as far as that goes and I'm not I'm, I'm not yet uh, terribly certain that the that it's a very high priority either for the EPA or for the Obama administration because they haven't really put up much of a fight against uh, against this kind of legislation, which has gotten a lot of uh, a lot of sign-ons around Congress. So it may be that uh, that that this goes through without uh, too much difficulty or without any any real opposition, even from the administration. It's coming up on 8.53.56 at our studios. Randy Staples is our guest from Idaho Weekly Briefing. You're listening to Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com with Bill Colley. Uh, also, uh, you, you have a mention of something, the Idaho Fire website, since we're on an environmental topic already. Uh, tell us exactly what this is all about. Well, there's a, there, uh, the uh, uh, agencies that are, that are, are uh, most heavily involved with with fighting fires, uh, including the some of the federal agencies, the, the Bureau of Land Management, Forest Service, uh, a number of uh, a number of others, even even state agencies and and some others, have been uh, trying to find new, better ways to uh, to put information about fires uh, out there. This could be a fairly heavy fire season. That's it's uh, there's there's some prediction that that may happen, and it certainly could. And the uh, National Interagency Fire Center, which is located in Boise, is uh, as as really kind of been the centerpiece of uh, of a lot of that that kind of, uh, of fire activity and uh, and co- and coordination, so that the different agencies can you know work together on on some of that rather than get hung up in uh, in bureaucratic infighting or something like that. And as part of that. Uh, part of the idea is to try to get information about fires out a little bit better in terms of what's happening in real time. The uh, the NIFC website has, for some years now, done a fairly decent job of getting some of that information out. But it, but given what's available now, the kind of real time uh, cameras, the kind of real time analysis that's that's out there in a lot of other areas, there was uh, there was certainly plenty of room for improving on that and uh, and doing more and better and idaho's uh, uh probably going to going to see some benefit out of uh, a more comprehensive and more really kind of uh hands on and real time kind of kind of website that that will let them tell let them know what fires are going on at any given time where they are if they're spreading if they're they're uh, being scaled back or whatever we only have a couple of minutes to go, and it's it's probably not uh, fair that we're only giving this last topic uh, a short shrift, but uh, nominees for the federal bench. Uh, this is probably an oversight, but apparently no women on the list uh, from uh, the uh, the Idaho U.S. Senate delegation, and so there's a, apparently a bit of a controversy going on over that. Well, uh, evidently, uh, at least according to the, re- the report in the Spokesman Review last week, there were a number of men interviewed for the judgeship, but but none of the women, uh, and uh, there were a number of female applicants for the for the position, including the U.S. attorney and a number of others that that just based on on resume would be fairly logical possibilities for it. Uh, none of them had been interviewed by the two U.S. senators who were kind of a an informal early screening committee for it. And whether or not that that means very much is is not terribly clear. The uh, the senators have said in a statement that they are not done with the interview process. That they've only interviewed some of the people that uh, that they may consider. So there was an indication there that uh, that that may be uh, corrected by the uh, uh, before very long by the time they they actually start submitting names. But. Uh, it's it's really kind of an kind of an early stage. Uh, the president is not obliged to uh, to uh, take the senator's suggestions, although it's uh, usually pretty pretty tough to get a, a U.S. district judge through the U.S. Senate 
which confirms those positions if the in-state senators aren't uh, aren't on board with them. I want to thank you much for your time today. And Randy, quickly, again, for people who'd like to check out the website, what's the address? That would be www.ridenbaugh.com. That's R-I-D-E-N-B-A-U-G-H. Right, we're looking forward to next week. Talk to you soon. Talk to you then. Bye-bye now. Randy Staples joining us this morning from Idaho Weekly Briefing, spending a few minutes with us on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com with Bill Colley on Top Story. We have one more hour coming up. I believe Chris Anderson from the Herod Center is also going to join us following the 920 break in the next hour. Oh, and uh, pay your bills, it's called. You should be listening. Uh, just hint, hint. Uh, you may have an opportunity, if you're listening in a short while, maybe just after the newscast from Fox at 9 o'clock, you may have an opportunity to enter to win some cash. Four figures, in fact, which could pay a lot of bills when it comes to that. And uh, if you hear the prompt, you can be the 25th caller at 1-877-854-9467. You'd have to be the 25th caller at this toll-free number. That's coming up in a few minutes. You have to listen for the prompt first. No one's taking the call just yet. one 854 W-I-N-S. Fox News is straight ahead. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. One more hour of the program ahead. Hope you can stick around.